Now, yeah. Mr. Giverostad, the chair of the group of the Alliance of the Liberals and Democrats in Europe. You have the floor. I, thank you, President. First of all, my apologies. I came in in the middle of your explanation, but I was saved by Facebook Live. So I followed you on Facebook Live, and that was my rescue uh, today because of strikes in Paris. So um, I have to tell you, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, you remember me, in fact, uh, a protagonist of a book. Uh, Maybe you know that book, uh, and the name of the protagonist, Mr. Calden. Calden is the protagonist in a book uh, of uh, uh, Dave Eggert, as you know, The Circle. And in that book, uh, it's about a big data company, a big data company with out of control. Not even the owner has uh, control on it. And that um, data is used in, uh, in elections. And it uh, seems me very, very near to the reality. Also, the fact that maybe you have less control or no control about your own company for the moment because you have to apologize now. I think in total you apologize now 15 or 16 times the last decade. In 2003 you started. Every year you have one or other wrongdoing or problem with Facebook and, and you have to face the reality and to say sorry and to say that you're going to fix it. Last year I think it was twice that you apologized and this year you, three times already and we are still in the month of May so it's a little bit early. Uh, in, in the year. So what my point is about that is, are you capable to fix it? And uh, if you have already uh, confronted so, uh, so many dysfunctions of uh, the system, there has to be clearly uh, a problem. And, and the only way, in my opinion, to do it, and I'm a liberal, a free marketeer, is to have um, public regulation to do so. It's a little bit like with the banks in the 2006, 2007, 2008. They said also, no, we're going to do self-regulation. Don't bother. No, no, we're going to do it ourselves. The reality is that they didn't do them themselves, and it was needed to have tough regulation. Uh, I have here um, an AFAS um, petition where one million, uh, more than one million citizens in Europe ask you to do that and to accept regulation and not to continue with the, the, uh, the idea, oh, we're going to self-regulate. And I come then to my concrete Questions. The first is about the GDPR and European privacy standards. You have told that you're going to apply them, but are you telling the truth, in fact, to us? Are you telling the truth because since the outbreak of uh, Cambridge Analytica, uh, you have massively transferred um, European data of non-European citizens out from Europe, away from the European service to service otherwise in Europe. I have to tell you that's against the regulation against GDPR and against the existing directive uh, in Europe, uh, 9546, was still uh, applicable. And the same that what Mr. Kamal is saying is happening, in fact, with European uh, non-Facebook users who are, in fact, collected uh, by you. And that's also against illegal in Europe, against the regulation. The second uh, point is Article 82 of the GDPR. You know, you have to know, Article 82 gives the possibility of compensation if there is a problem, if Facebook users were abused. May I ask you, have you an idea? Will you compensate the European Facebook users, as foreseen in Article 82 of GDPR? Concrete question. And what will be the amount that you will give them? Maybe the, the value that they have with their profile? My value, I have uh, examined it. My value as, uh, as Facebook user is $186. I thought it was more, but maybe my wife thinks it's less. Uh, and, 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 uh, it could be less. My, so my opponents think it's less. Uh, but maybe it's a good basis. What their value is as profile could be the compensation that you give to these people based on a regulation. And my third point is about, uh, Mr. Weber said it already, and I think he's right, you cannot convince him, because it's nonsense, naturally. You have the, given the example of Twitter. You have given the example, I think, also of Google, eh, as some of your competitors. But it's like somebody who has a monopoly in making cars uh, is saying, look, I have a monopoly in making cars, but there is no problem. You can take a plane. You can take a train. Uh, you, you can even take your bike. So I have no uh, monopoly. So there is a, a problem there, and my, I have two specific questions there. 
could you or would you cooperate with the European antitrust authorities to examine it and to open your books so that we can see if yes or no there is a monopoly? And secondly, if you have to split off, for example, Facebook Messenger, to give you an example, and WhatsApp, and to keep then Instagram, should that be a good deal for you that you could accept? So finally, as my last point is uh, on a more personal note. I, I really think we have a big problem here. And it's not solved by saying we're going to fix it ourselves. And you have to ask yourself what, how you will be remembered as one of the three big internet giants, together with Steve Jobs, I should say, and Bill Gates, who have enriched our world and our societies, or on the other hand, in fact, a, a genius who created a, a digital monster that is destroying our democracies and our societies for the moment. That's a question that you have to put yourself for yourself. Okay.